Hi, my name is Kristen Kilpatrick and I am an FNP student at Maryville University. This is my head to toe physical exam and this is Lori and she agreed to be my patient today. I had her empty her bladder already and I would put a gallon on her if I had one. And I already did her vital signs before this video. Her heart rate was 74, her blood pressure was 116 over 72, her respirations were 17, her um, temperature was 98.2, her SpO2 was 99% on room air. We did her weight and height, and her height was 5 foot 3, and her weight was 120 pounds. First, I'm going to go ahead and do a general um, exam of her head, skull, and face. So I'm um, just looking for any abnormalities. I'm looking at the facial bones, um, see if there's um, any abnormalities there. Um, I'm looking at the temporomandibular joint. Go ahead and clench your teeth. Okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and feel the skull for any lesions. And I'm also feeling the texture of the hair. And I'm going to feel for the sinuses for any tenderness. Okay. All right. And next, I am going to go ahead and do light sensation on her face. Go ahead and close your eyes. Oh, I'm touching. My forehead. Nose, right cheek, left cheek, my chin. All right, and that was great. Um, next, I am going to go ahead and um, just look at your eyes. I am going to go ahead and feel your eyes, your eyelids, feeling your eyelashes, all your eyelashes are present, and your eyebrows. I see that your ears are, um, the top of your ears are in line with your eyes, which is a normal finding. And um, I'm going to feel for the lacrimal apparatus. Is that tender? No. Okay. And I already, um, I would test the her mirror vision on the Rosenbaum chart, um, but I won't at this time. I'm going to go ahead and look at the um, sclera and the conjunctiva lookup. The sclera is white with some vessels noted, and the conjunctiva is a pink. All right, and same for the other side. I'm going to do the pupil reaction with forward. All right, great. Next, I'm going to do um, the visual fields um, and extraocular eye movements with Lori. So go ahead and shut your right eye. I'll shut my left and tell me how many fingers you see. One, two, three, four. All right, and that was correct. I'm gonna do the cover uncover test with Lori. Look straight forward. I'm looking for any um, deviations or any movement in the eye. Whenever I look at the eye that's being covered and then I look at the opposite. All right, great. And next, I'm going to go ahead and find the red reflex in Lori. Use do her right eye with my right eye, and we're coming close. And I see the red reflex. Do her left with my left hand. Left eye. All right, and there was the red reflex again. Great. Okay, and um, I believe that will be it for all of the eyes. Next will be the ears. So I already talked about um, the alignment of the ears and position. I'm going to palpate the oracle for any lesions. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my otoscope and look at the tympanic membrane and the um, ear canal. Okay. Tympanic membrane was a pearly gray. Bony prominences were seen. No fluid or perforation was noted. All right, and that will be it for the ears for now. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the nose. I'm just looking at the nose for the skin characteristics, at her septum, she had a deviated septum that was fixed when she was younger. And um, I'm, look, so I'm looking at the septum right now, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and test the patency. Breathe. Okay, and that was, um, she was able to breathe whenever I did that. I'm going to look inside the nose, look your head up, for the mucosa, which is pink. 
The turbinates are not swollen, and the septum is symmetrical. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and move to the lips and the mouth. So I'm just going to palpate the lips. They're moist, no lesions noted. Go ahead and stick your tongue out and say, ah. ah. I'm looking at the gums, buccal mucosa, soft and hard palate. Um, the floor of the mouth, they're all pink, no lesions noted. The teeth are all present. She does have some fillings and some crowns, and they are white. Um, her teeth are a white color. Her, go ahead and say ah again. The posterior, uh -huh. the posterior oral pharynx is a pink color. Um, her tonsillar pillars are were noted, and um, the uvula was noted also a pink color. And um, she does not have any tonsils because she got them taken out whenever she was younger. And I saw that her tongue was a um, pink color. She had normal movement and it was all symmetric. And there were no lesions noted. And um, so that is going to conclude the mouth exam. So next I'm going to go ahead and move to the um, neck. So I'm just looking, inspecting the neck for symmetry. Um, smoothness of the neck. I'm going to look for jugular venous distension. None is noted. I'm going to feel the carotid pulses. Okay, and I'm going to feel for the trachea and then for the thyroid. Okay, go ahead and swallow. All right, and so I'm going to just go ahead and move on to the lymph nodes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and actually auscultate the carotid um, arteries and the thyroid for any breweries. Go ahead and hold your breath. All right, no bravies were noted. Next, I'm going to go ahead and feel for the um, lymph nodes. So, preauricular, postauricular, occipital, tonsillar, submandibular, submental, superficial cervical chain, posterior cervical, Deep cervical chain, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, and axillary. And I did not, not note any enlarged lymph nodes. Next, I'm going to go ahead and move to the upper extremity, shoulders, arms, and hands. I'm going to inspect for any um, obvious um, deformities or any skin lesions. I see some venous patterns. I'm going to assess the nails. They're pink and they have good capillary refill. I'm going to assess the pulses, the radial pulse first. And the brachial. All right, and next I'm going to go ahead and move on to the back. So go ahead and turn over a little bit. Okay, I'm looking at the thoracic configuration, and I am assessing her respirations, although I would never tell a patient that I'm assessing the respirations. And I am going to um, go ahead and I'm looking at her skin and symmetry and um, looking at the respiratory effort um, on Lori, which is all normal and non-labored. I'm going to um, percuss the coxal vertebral angle. That hurt? No. All right, go ahead and stand up. Next, while I'm looking at the back, I am going to go ahead and um, do thoracic expansion on her. Big deep breath. Let it out. Big deep breath and let it out. Okay, and my thumbs rose and f fell um, in a symmetric pattern. And um, so that was normal. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do tactile fremitus. Say 99 every time I touch your, your back. 99, 99, 99, 99, 
Ninety nine. All right, and that was normal. I'm gonna do tactile firmatus on the front also. Say ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Okay, and um, I felt the movement, the vibration was symmetric on the front also. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just percuss the um, the lungs on the back. Go ahead and lift your arms up. And do the posterior and then the lateral. All right, you can go ahead and put your arms down. And that was great, there was resonance in all areas. And next, I'm going to go ahead and do the diaphragmatic excursion. Go ahead and take a big deep breath in and hold it. Okay, go ahead and let it out. Okay, big deep breath in and let it out and then hold it. Okay, and that was about four centimeters. I'm going to do it on the other side also. Big deep breath in and hold it. Okay, hold it, or let it out. Big deep breath in, let it out, and then hold it. Okay. That was about four again. And that's a normal finding, three to five centimeters. All right. And next, I'm going to go ahead and listen to the lungs on the um, posterior side of her back, comparing one side to the other. Take a breath every time I put my stethoscope on your back. All right, go ahead and sit on the bed. I'm going to listen to the lung sounds on the front. All right, and all lung sounds were clear. Next, I'm just looking at the chest wall. I'm looking for any heaves, pulsations. Um, I'm looking for symmetry also with respirations again. And um, I'm going to palpate the chest wall for any crepitus or any abnormalities, none noted. And I don't see any heaves. I'm going to then um, find the apical impulse. Go ahead and lean forward a little bit. And I palpated the precordium. You'll feel the carotid pulse. All right, but there was no um, heaves or lifts noted whenever I did that also. Next, I am going to, I'll go ahead and um, percuss the size of the heart. All right, and um, that's how you progress the size of the heart. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and listen to all the heart sounds. Aortic, pulmonic, herbs point or second pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. All right, and next I will do the abdomen assessment. So I'll go ahead and have you lay down. Head in the pillow. All right, so 
So I'm just going to go ahead and inspect the abdomen. So first, I'm just looking for any pulsations. I'm looking for any aortic pulsations and I don't see any. Um, I'm looking at the contour and any skin characteristics and it all looks pretty symmetric. Um, next, I am going to go ahead and auscultate before I ever touch her. Four quadrants. She had active bowel sounds. I'm going to listen with the bell of my stethoscope. At the abdominal aorta for any screwies, renal arteries. And I'd, I would also listen to the iliac and the femoral arteries. Next, I am going to go ahead and percuss. I'm going to percuss each of the four quadrants first, noting their tone. and there was resonance in all four areas. Next, I'm going to percuss the sides of the liver. Okay. About seven centimeters, which is normal from six to 12. Next, I'm going to percuss for some splenic dullness. Okay, and um, finally I'm going to palpate. So I'm going to do light palpation, looking at her face to see if there's any guarding. And then I'm going to do deep palpation. Now I'm going to palpate for the um, sizes of the organs. Big deep breath in. For the liver border. Okay, let it off. I'm just going to help it for the spleen. These are not felt. And I'm going to palpate for the left kidney. And I already um, palpated for um, any aortic pulsations. And um, go ahead and lift your head up to see if there's any hernias, and there is none. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cover you back up. Go ahead and sit back up, please. And I'm going to go ahead and look at her legs. I'm looking at her skin characteristics, temperature, any edema. I'm looking at the hair distribution, and she shaves. Um, and I'm just looking um, to see if there's any abnormalities. I'm also looking at muscle mass, and she's got some good muscles. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and just feel for the pulses, dorsalis pedis, posterior tibialis, popliteal, and the same. All right, and I'm going to test the cranial nerves now. Um, so the first one is going to be olfactory, the first cranial nerve, and that is smell, but I will not test that at this time. The second one is optic, so go ahead and um, I'm going to have you do the um, six cardinal fields of gaze. Keep your head still and follow my pin light. All right, great. Three is um, trochlear, or is oc oculomotor. Four is trochlear, um, and six is abducens. And um, with that one, I actually will test, I um, tested the six cardinal fields of gaze already. For optic, I can also test um, visual fields by confrontation. So look straight at me. Tell me when you see my fingers wiggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, cranial nerve five is trigeminal, and um, I'm going to go ahead and have you clench your teeth. Okay, great. Um, seven is facial, so go ahead and smile. Brown. Close your eyes tight. Raise your eyebrows. Open your eyes. Raise your eyebrows. Show me your teeth. Puff out your cheeks. So that was seven. Eight is going to be acoustic or vestibule cochlear, and that is hearing. So I'm going to um, go ahead and do the whisper test first. Cover that ear. Eight, two, four. Awesome. Cover the other ear, please. One, two, seven. Okay. I'm going to do the Renee test. Tell me when you stop hearing the um, vibration. Now. All right, and nine is glossopharyngeal and ten is vagus. And um, I would test taste, but I'm not going to at this time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and um, test her by having her stick out her tongue. Say, ah. Uh -huh. I'm going to test the gag reflex. Okay. And um, that was nine and ten, so eleven is spinal accessory. So your shoulder. Push against my hand. Okay, and 12 is hypoglossal. Stick out your tongue, say ah, move ah. from side to side. All right, and swallow. Great. So she um, was able to do all 12 cranial nerves, and that's awesome. So next is going to be musculoskeletal. So I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to do some reflexes. Well, first, I'm just going to test your strength. Go ahead and squeeze my hands. Okay, push up on my hands and down. Okay, push down, push up, and pull back, and push out. Awesome, that was great strength. I'm going to do the reflexes, so the brachial radialis. And do the patellar. Okay, and I'm going to do the Achilles. Okay, and she did those great. And um, next I will go ahead and just have her stand on up. I'm going to look at the cervical and the lumbar spine. There is a concave curvature on both and that is normal. So go ahead, I'm gonna test the cervical spine. So go ahead and tuck your um, chin to your chest, chin to the ceiling. Put, try to put your chin over to your shoulder. Okay, chin to the other shoulder, and then ear to your one shoulder, and then ear to your other shoulder. All right, and go ahead and look forward. I'm going to have you reach and touch your toes. This is testing lumbar, come on up. Okay, she does have some scoliosis. And um, I'm going to have you arch your back backwards. And uh, go ahead and go from side, go down to the right side, and to the left. All right, you can go ahead and sit down. And um, that is the end of my head to toe exam video. Thank you for watching.